Amiga, do you ever feel caught between two worlds? You cherish your cultural background, but sometimes it clashes with the realities of raising a family in modern America. You might feel pressured to fulfill traditional expectations, yet you crave a life that allows you to be your true authentic self. If you're a Latina mom nodding your head right now, I see you and I get it. Balanced Madrehood is more than your average mommy coaching program. It's a supportive comunidad designed specifically for you. I understand the unique challenges you face navigating between generations and culturas while forging your own path as a mama. Stop feeling like you have to choose between your roots and your future. Balanced Motherhood empowers you to create a life that celebrates your heritage, embraces your motherhood journey, and prioritizes your own happiness. Spots are limited. Don't miss out on this opportunity to connect with a supportive community and create a more balanced life. Visit the link in the show notes to join the waitlist for the next Balanced Motherhood cohort. I can't wait to meet you. Hola, hola, amiga. Today's episode is all about those well-meaning but sometimes overwhelming nuggets of advice we get from our beloved family members. We all love and appreciate them, but let's be honest, sometimes their unsolicited advice on raising our little ones can feel like information overload. From comments on breastfeeding to opinions on baby food and discipline, navigating this territory with respect and grace can be a challenge. But fear not, mommies. Today, I'll equip you with strategies for filtering advice and communicating your needs with love. So stay tuned on this episode as I help you navigate unsolicited advice from your family members. Welcome to the Viva La Mami podcast. I am your host, Jessica Cuevas. I am a mother of two on a mission to help redefine the meaning of motherhood as a modern Latina mom. Motherhood can be a complex journey, interwoven in two identities that often make us feel ni de aquí ni de allá. Viva la Mami is committed to providing you with knowledge, tools, and support to navigate the challenges and triumphs of motherhood as Latina moms. On the show, we'll be discussing culturally relevant topics that will help inform and empower you in whichever season you are in on your motherhood journey. We'll be joined by Latina moms, experts and professionals who can offer advice, practical tips, relatable stories, and honest conversations. So bring your cafecito as I invite you to be a part of this space as we create comunidad about the exciting and challenging parts of being a mommy. Ahora, vámonos. So here's a story about a time when I received unsolicited advice from a family member. And this was when we had our first baby, Diego, three years ago. <laughs> He's still my baby. And this was when he was a newborn and our in-laws visited and my suegra asked me, no vas a poner a tu bebe al lado? No le vas a poner una almohada? So she's asking me if we don't put the baby to sleep on its side with a pillow. And I was like, er, say what? <laughs> I was honestly shocked because... First of all, that is like a no-no, like a big no-no for little babies. Like you do not put anything on their crib or their bassinet. You don't even like put their cobijas on. And this is something about Latino culture. I don't know about you, but for me, any little bit of like cold temperature, we just need to cover our babies. And this can even be like indoors, okay, like not outside. And so you always have to snuggle them. You always have to put the cobija San Marcos because they're going to get sick. And I still have yet to interview a Latina pediatrician. So if anyone listening out there, let me know because I want to debunk those myths that we usually grew up with, if they are myths, because this is my assumption. But I'm pretty sure you can relate with this. 
And so anyway, going back to, you know, my interaction with mi suegra, obviously she did this out of the goodness of her heart where she was just genuinely curious if we put the baby on its side and and with a pillow. And I literally felt my heart race. I literally felt really hot. And I think it was because it kind of shocked me. I, I was kind of taken aback. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Um, for me, I don't know, I was almost on the defense because first of all, I was still going through this postpartum period. So I was probably like hormones were all over the place. And the way that she kind of sounded, it almost seemed like she was curious, but also like almost making it seem like I had no other choice but to put the baby on its side. And, and I don't know, I kind of got that vibe. And luckily, Alex was there my husband and he was like come on ma we don't we don't put babies to sleep on it on, on their side we don't do that anymore people don't do that in, anymore and so i'm glad that he was there because otherwise i would have flipped and and this is me kind of being this sort of reactive person because that's just who i am especially when i am taken aback so i am so glad that i had someone with me and so i'm pretty sure that many of you have gone through a similar situation where you have just gotten unsolicited advice. And I don't know if you've ever felt a certain way or you reacted a certain way. And how did you really navigate that? And so for today's episode, I'm going to give you some sort of strategies to equip you on how you can communicate your needs and all with respect. So let's first acknowledge the wealth of knowledge and experience that the mommies we know and love bring to the table. They've raised children, maybe even you, and their advice comes from a place of love and honest concern. However, it's important to remember that parenting styles and cultural norms evolve over time. What worked for our abuelitas, mamas, tias, and suegras might not necessarily be the best approach for raising our children in today's world. The key is, though, is to appreciate their wisdom while filtering it through the lens of your own parenting philosophy and your unique situation as well. And so I asked my listeners via Instagram and I asked them a couple questions and put out polls. And one of the questions that I asked was, who has given you the most unsolicited advice? And interesting enough, 38% of you said it was your suegra. Followed by, and this was a tie, it was your mama and your abuelita at 23%. And then 15% of you said that it was your tia. So to me, that's kind of interesting. And I think it makes sense. (laughs) You tell me if I'm wrong. But especially how oftentimes it is women in your family that aren't so blood related that perhaps give you that unsolicited advice. So yeah, just pointing it out there. And I also asked if anyone has ever responded back after given unsolicited advice. And 57% of you said yes, which I'm so glad you do because it is so important that we respond in a way that is respectful, but also that creates awareness to those who give such unsolicited advice. And so while we may feel shocked, upset, angry, or straight up confused at receiving unsolicited advice, let's remember to desechar lo malo y escoger lo bueno sort of concept. So here are some tips for navigating unsolicited advice with grace. The first one is listen with an open mind. Thank your family member for their advice and acknowledge their good intentions. Let them know you appreciate their concern for your baby's well-being. So in the example of positioning your baby a certain way at night during their nap or during their sleep, I know I have gotten this also from family members about putting our newborn, literally our newborn, on their stomach. 
So, yeah. <laughs> and so in this context, maybe we can say, oh, thank you for your question or your comment. The second strategy is to ask clarifying questions. So don't just nod along passively or react and attack. Dig a little deeper to understand the rationale behind the advice. So for example, you may say, oh, you said to put baby on their stomach instead of putting them on their back. Is there a reason why you prefer this over this other way? So again, digging a little bit deep about why they kind of told you to put the baby on their stomach, just to have a better understanding. The third strategy is to offer alternatives. If appropriate, propose alternative so solutions that address their concerns while aligning with your parenting style. So for example, you may want to say, maybe we can try a safer way to put baby to sleep instead of putting them on their stomach. And so kind of reframing it in a way where you can kind of do this together sort of thing. The fourth strategy is to express your appreciation and gratitude. Even if you don't necessarily agree with the advice, thank them for sharing their wisdom. You can say something like, thank you for the advice. I really appreciate you wanting the best for me, baby. And just leave it like that. The final strategy that I have for you is focus on your confidence. And this is kind of a reminder for myself <laughs> too. You may want to speak with confidence when communicating your decisions. Let your familia know you've researched different approaches and have chosen a method that feels right for you, your family, and your bebe. This can also be an educational moment and perhaps talk about safe sleep practices to reduce the risk of SIDS, especially when we were babies. For the most part, like we grew up during this whole epidemic that happened and there are there's research and reasons why babies should sleep on their backs like this is one of the questions that pediatricians ask during routine visits with your baby and something that I got and even my pediatrician was like just use my name just put my name as an excuse to stop the unsolicited <laughs> advice because I was struggling especially with my first navigating motherhood was very difficult because you're in this new world, new identity. And I remember telling my pediatrician, well, my mom told me this. And she's like, you know what? Just say my pediatrician said this or that, and we're going to stick to that. So just giving you perspective. So it's important to acknowledge the deep respect we have for our family members within the Latino family structure. Our abuelitas, mamas, Tias, suegras, deserve our love and appreciation because they too had to go through the hurdles of motherhood and perhaps they navigated unsolicited advice as well, which is kind of ironic, don't you think? <laughs> the key is to strike a balance between honoring traditions and setting boundaries for your own well-being and parenting choices. We can show respect for them while still making informed decisions about how to raise our children. And this to me is something that I'm still working on. Trust me, it's a whole process. So mamas, there you have it. We've explored the delicate topic of navigating unsolicited advice from our beloved women in our family. And remember, it's okay to appreciate their words and their wisdom while also filtering it through the lens of your own parenting philosophy. As a mom, you, without a doubt, will be inundated with unwanted and unnecessary advice. And sometimes we have to build a thick skin, <laughs> and it is up to us to set boundaries to protect our own mental health and our own parenting journey. Navigating family dynamics and unsolicited advice can be a challenge, as we all know, but you don't have to do this alone. Balanced Motherhood is my signature coaching program designed to empower bicultural Latina moms just like you to navigate motherhood with confidence and joy. In this supportive community, you'll learn powerful strategies 
for communicating effectively with your family, setting healthy boundaries, prioritizing your self-care, and so much more. Imagine having access to exclusive resources, one-on-one support, and group coaching sessions that will be focused on how to navigate unsolicited advice, just like this episode. And I'm going to help you create a more peaceful and fulfilling motherhood experience. So head over to vivalamami.com forward slash balanced motherhood. That is balanced with a D at the end dash motherhood to learn more about balanced motherhood and enroll today. The doors to this inaugural coaching program are opening soon. So don't miss out on this opportunity to transform your motherhood experience. All right, amiga, thank you for listening. Hasta la próxima y nos vemos on the next episode. Mujer, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to the Viva La Mami podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, will you do me a favor and follow the podcast and leave a rating and review? Hitting that follow button and reviewing my show will allow other mommies like you find this podcast. Your review will also tell me if you enjoy the show, so I would truly appreciate your thoughts. Don't forget, please share this podcast con tus amigas. Also, make sure to follow me at Viva La Mami on Instagram or visit vivalamami.com. Please note the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as professional advice. Okay, mujer, thank you for joining y nos vemos in the next episode. Thank you.